you may be the first 3D printing accessories brand to be a finalist as part of Andam. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I think the last time that I looked at a 3D printed object is that it's made out of this very, very kind of brittle polymer, sharp, rough, not nice thing to hold. And your pieces look like a sort of smooth, polished, you know, like it looks like a stone yeah. and it looks like something that's actually like quite like nice and tactile to hold. I wondered if you could maybe talk through the process. I mean, the thing with Publish By is that we start completely digital first of all. I think that's our approach also like from the design aspect. For straight away we 3D render and animate everything. What is really beneficial for us, like so we can show it to, you know, collaborators or buyers or, or also our customers. And from that moment on, we swap into the 3D printing world, basically. We found this part, and we do it also in-house, where we have 3D printers who can create surfaces that, are extre that basically come out polished. What is really amazing. I think that also like sustainability comes into it a lot as well. Um, it gives us the chance to, as Chris mentioned, we, before bringing anything into the physical world, uh, it, we create a digital twin, which we're able to democratically confirm from you know wholesale buyers and our customers that this is a product they would like before we even you know create any physical waste or any bring anything physically into the world so how has it been kind of um i guess like getting people's heads around this way of production because i'm assuming that you have to pre-establish the quantities or are you producing on demand yeah that's the cool thing about the pipeline we have so we created our own production design pipeline that is basically done by us in the house and that is actually really exciting because that's exactly what you talk about we can say we need two pieces we need four or we need 800 and based on that numbers we can swap the production steps and also like the way we produce so this is super exciting for us. So let's say as an example, we go and we, we one of our partners is Brown, so we really work closely together. So I say, mm, guys, do you like this 3D animation? Everything is spinning and opening and closing. And he was like, oh yeah, that's really good. Like it looks exactly the way it will come out. You know, that's also a big advantage. It's not like, oh, my, it might look like that. No, it's going to be like that. So we can be super aware from the beginning that what we show is what they get. COVID actually presented a very unique opportunity for us because when we found out that um, you know Paris Fashion Week was was not going to be taking place in a physical form as it had been before, um, you know a lot of brands were really stuck about what they would do and how they would present their product. We took it as an opportunity. So in that season, we didn't produce even one prototype. We created it all in the digital world. We uh, made mixed reality photo shoots. So we took all photos of models without bags on and we rendered them on top. And in this case, we didn't produce one sample. We produced everything digitally. We showed the buyers and they ordered um, based on, on those renders. And, um, but aesthetically speaking, published by like, uh, in its like kind of core cool collection leans towards like these sort of very elemental, uh, organic kind of forms. And same with the jewelry as well, with like the kind of freshwater pearls and those, those sort of elements. Is that just your natural kind of aesthetic leaning? I think you have to be really balanced out that you don't go too far with technology and push it to a direction where people don't really want it anymore. So what we did and was really exciting for us is we went to like 50 traditional craftsmen around the world and said to them, how would you build up a luxury, luxury bag that, you know, we then understand how to produce? And I'm coming from a fashion background, so I know. And then I translated that into our technology and thought like, I want to give the people the feeling if they open the bag, that they're wearing like a super luxurious handbag, but for a price point, mm -hmm. they can like afford, you know? And that was fast and really important. And the, the aesthetic itself, I mean, my family's from Greece and we are there quite often what is luxury yeah. and then you know it's really funny but it's honestly the truth i walked around on the beach and it sounds really like like a weird story but i saw this stone and i was really like kind of like sad about yeah. like this industry and i was like 
Well, honestly, like, look at these shapes. I mean, how cool would it be to have an object that you can create, that you can, you know, wear, that you can, like, explore and that you can, like, use as a bag, but has this really organic uniqueness, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's how it all came up, basically. You know, we still have these stones lying around everywhere here mm -hmm. because that's what we collect to, <laughs> to think about what we do next. Going back to what you said, potentially we are the first... Um, you know, uh, come a brand using this technology that's been nominated for, on, and um, so we want to say it's a huge um, honor. I think that potentially we've always felt like kind of a bit outsiders in the fashion world, just because we do things, we're trying to do things in such a new and different way. Um, so to get that confirmation from such a um, you know prestigious award like Undone is like a huge honor.